Oh boy, it's that time again. Another entry in the Top 10 Worst series. The last time we were together for one, it was the Dark type. And as assumed, you guys went ahead and chose the bug tapping for this go around. I bet you're expecting a cavalcade of some awful, awful Pokemon, being that bug types are the worst of all typings. Well, your expectations will hopefully be met here. Though, uh, I'm going to spoil something for you right now. There is no Shuckle on this list. Can you believe that? Well, I'm sure some of you can, but the reality is it just isn't as bad as some of you might have thought compared to the Pokemon we're about to talk about. However, before we get started, it's that time again. My Hero Academia aired this morning, and I've got a review of it up on the Sixth Sage. Check it out not long after this video, and enjoy hearing my take on the start of this new arc. Now that this plug is out of the way, let's just hop into the top 10. We're going to be starting off here at number 10 with Vespaquin, the first of a few flying bug types that will make their appearance on this list. I'll say this much, Vespaquin stole this spot from the next Pokemon on the list thanks to its access to the heavy duty boots in Sword and Shield, which saves it from taking massive damage from Stealth Rocks. If not for those, it would have definitely been at number 9 instead. Now its stats, they paint a picture of defense. The base 102 in both is really solid, though base 70 HP isn't great for showing bulk. Its speed isn't great either, which is unfortunate. However, with the ability pressure and those defenses, it becomes a bit clear that Vespaquin is something of a stall Pokemon. It has Toxic, it has Pressure, it has Roost. It can do a decent job at filling in that stall role. However, beyond its ability to do those things, it has some attacking moves that it can turn to. A couple of attack stats at base 80 lend itself Air Slash, Acrobatics, and Attack Order, all being somewhat viable as offensive options. Though there isn't all that much coverage in this move pool. There's plenty of stab for sure, but only poison moves really make an appearance after them, aside from the random fighting a rock type. That's sort of what left Vespaquin in a position to make this list. It's a really poor move pool. While it might look like the sort of Pokemon made just to stall, that isn't always going to work. And sometimes you'll want to run Defog and actual offensive moves alongside it. And there just aren't a lot of good options. You'll be stuck defogging and U-turning over and over again. And there are other Pokemon that can do that a lot better and faster. Vespaquin makes a lot of sense to open up this top 10, and it sort of sets the stage for the rest of this one. There aren't a lot of competent attackers here today. Moving on to number 9, we've got the first of quite a few Hoenn Pokemon making their appearance on the list. It's going to be the eyeball Pokemon, Masquerain, yet another flying bug type. So to start things off, it's got a pretty good ability being Intimidate, which of course helps cripple physical attackers. So you know, look out Aerodactyl, you're not going to be able to stop Masquerain. Well, um, yeah you are, but whatever. I mean, don't forget, there is no Masquerain in Sword and Shield, so it can't use the heavy duty boots thus being at the mercy of Stealth Rocks. Its physical defense is bad, and its special defense isn't much either, with its HP somewhere in between. However, as a special attacker, it's probably one of the best Pokemon we're talking about today, base 100. It can hit hard if it tries to, and if it's given the opportunity, which is difficult with the bad bulk. Its move pull boasts Quiver Dance, which we'll talk about plenty today, and it gets potential to make Masquerain a much better Pokemon. Now, like I've been saying, its defenses just don't follow up the rest of it all that well, so setting up might be a bit difficult here. If you manage to set up though, you've got Air Slash, Bug Buzz, and some coverage options in Scald and Ice Beam to turn to. It's actually a pretty nice lineup of moves, and with Defog in the pool, you could even get rid of Hazards. But, like I alluded to earlier, not having access to Heavy Duty Boots is crippling for these flying bug types. Masquerain is a Pokemon that people often can forget, but you know, it's definitely got potential. It's just super difficult to live up to it. That's what leaves it here on the precipice of true mediocrity. But I believe it sits here just outside the truly awful group of Pokemon we'll be talking about today. All right, here at number eight, 
I grouped two Pokemon together. I actually do this one more time on the list, as it felt right to spend time talking about these Pokemon in one entry as opposed to separately. They both come from the same evolutionary line and are pretty similar for the most part. I'm talking Beautifly and Dustox, the king and queen of Petalburg Woods. I basically have to put them together because their stat layouts are practically the same. The only difference here is Dustox is more on the defensive end, while Beautifly is an attacker. They're two sides of the same coin, so let's just talk about them together. So, 90 special defense on Dustox and essentially no attack stats. Then 100 special attack on Beautifly and a big lack in defenses. What is the better of the two here? Well, I'd guess it would have to be Dustox, because at the very least, its odds of surviving for more than one turn are better. It has a better typing too. Flying in Bug is quite a bit worse than Bug and Poison, which offers some resistances and less weaknesses. Both of these guys have 65 base speed, so neither are outspeeding much of anything. And you guys know how I don't enjoy these slow Pokemon. Now, offensively, like I said, Beautifly is the better Pokemon. It can use Quiver Dance, which, if you can possibly overcome your poor speed and defenses right off the bat, will make it a bit stronger. It can use Defog to remove hazards, though switching in on Stealth Rocks won't go well for it. It's able to use Bug Buzz and I guess Air Cutter, though it's a shame it doesn't get Air Slash. As for Dustox, it can also use Quiver Dance, which might actually be more useful since its ability to take a hit is much better than its counterpart. It can use Defog too, and seeing as it won't take as much from Stealth Rocks, it works out a little better. It can use Sludge Bomb, Energy Ball, and Bug Buzz, so a level of stab moves and a little bit of coverage is definitely present. Honestly, Dustox just is the better Pokemon here. And yet, they're still both not great. There's some utility, some potential, but it's whatever. It only gets worse from here. Remember when Twitch played Pokemon and they caught a Venomoth and named it ATV, thus turning it into a convertible? Well, I do. So, let's go. It's time for number six on this list, Venomoth. It's the first Gen 1 Pokemon we're talking about today. And, uh, you know, it's pretty bad. As a matter of fact, it's so bad that I'm going to change it back into a regular Venomoth instead of a convertible for the rest of this video. Its stats aren't great at all. Base 90 in both speed and special attack, and essentially it has no bulk at all. Now, that being said, I suppose as a special attacker, something can be done to make it useful. But I don't really recommend trying to take a Venomoth and make it relevant. Shield Dust, one of its abilities, isn't horrible as it prevents secondary effects of moves from activating against Venomoth. So it can't be burned by Scald or paralyzed by Thunderbolt. I suppose Tinted Lens is a decent ability, turning all not very effective attacks in the neutral ones. You know, even Wonder Skin is an interesting one, as it makes it less likely that status moves like Thunder Wave or Confuse Ray actually connect with Venomoth. So I guess what I'm trying to say is those abilities are really the only good thing about Venomoth. When we look into the move pool, the first thing you'll notice is probably Quiver Dance. It's a good setup move, of course, and the potential boost to special defense can make it a little viable. However, you know, it's still not great when the odds are Venomoth is crushed before it can make use of the boots. However, should you succeed in at least using one, moves like Bug Buzz, Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, and Energy Ball will be at your disposal, and will hit somewhat effectively. I mean, this thing even has Defog, which is a viable move to run on it. Look, unfortunately, Venomoth's defenses hold it back big time from even daring to be a good Pokemon. But lucky for it, the top six was already full, so it avoids that kind of embarrassment. Well, we've talked about so many flying bug types already, so why not one more? Ladian is the worst of the group falling under those typings, checking in right here outside the top five. Its stats are harsh, with the exception of its special defense, and it's sort of jarring for it to not even be in the top five. I mean, it is really bad having only 110 special defense and 80 speed, and then not a single stat over 55. Its abilities Swarm and Early Bird are pretty bad, but the hidden ability Iron Fist at least offers something offensively that can probably be used to some sort of degree of success. I really doubt it though, because at the end of the day, 35 physical attack and 55 special attack don't exactly equate to any sort of power. 
When we look at the move pool on this thing, we see Bug Buzz and Air Slash, which are at least making use of its better attack stat. But those are really the only good moves it has that are special. It has a ton of coverage, like the Elemental Punches, Drain Punch, and Knock Off, but even with Iron Fist, how strong can you really expect this 35 base attack Pokemon to be? I'll tell you, not very. It does have access to Defog, like many of the other bugs we've talked about already, but once again, this thing isn't in Sword and Shield. So it doesn't get the heavy duty boots, and will be destroyed by Stealth Rocks. Again, I'm a bit flabbergasted that Ladian didn't make it into the top 5 with how bad it is. So we have to figure the next 5 are really, really bad. We've got another tie starting off our top 5, and it's once again a duo of Hoenn Pokemon. It's Volbeat and Illumise this time, and I'm sure these two are favorites of one of you guys watching the video right now, so I'll be on the lookout for the comments defending them majorly. So essentially, the two have the same stat layout, just one is a physical attacker and the other is a special attacker. That's simple enough. Neither one is particularly good, though if nothing else, they're at least consistent. I will say though, a big redeeming factor here is both Pokemon have Prankster and also access to Thunder Wave. I'd say those are really the only thing they're good for, paralyzing a Pokemon and hoping hacks can keep them alive for a bit. The other abilities are rather inconsequential, so let's take a look at the moves now. You know, Volbeat has access to Tail Glow, which immediately puts it far and ahead of Illumise in the attacking department. As we know, Tail Glow will increase a Pokemon's special attack by three stages when used, so it's very easy to end up with a wild special attack. That immediately helps Volbeat, and if it gets lucky enough to paralyze an opponent and not get knocked out immediately, it has some potential to set up. Now, there is truly a lot of reliance here on that Prankster ability, and thus Dark types have nothing to fear, but it's really something. Both Pokemon have moves like Bug Buzz, Shadow Ball, and Dazzling Gleam in their sets, which they can take advantage of. But all in all, they don't stack up well when they have to rely on hacks to get by. Plus, I mean, even with Tail Glow, Volbeat still isn't really set up stats-wise to be a special attacker. It'd be a much better move on Illumise. I digress though, there isn't much more else to say about either of these Pokemon. Welcome to the top 5 folks, it only continues to get worse from here. We have got back-to-back -back Sinnoh Pokemon coming up here, and we'll start off this duo with Wormadam. Now, Wormadam is actually interesting to talk about since it has three different forms, and thus three different typings working alongside the bug aspect. Its Plant Cloak is a Grass type, the Sandy Cloak is a Ground type, and the Trash Cloak is a Steel type. I'll throw the stats up on screen, but essentially they all have a difference in defenses, with one being more special, another physical, and the third a mix between the two. It's the same deal with attack stats as well, but none of them are particularly all that good. Oh, uh, and above all else, they're slow as hell. The Trash Cloak is probably the best defensively, having only a single major weakness to fire while resisting 8 different typings and being immune to one, while the Plant Cloak is the worst at its 6 weaknesses. I don't think I need to get into the useless abilities of Anticipation and Overcoat, so let's go look at some moves. Oh hey, look, there's no moves. They might all have access to Quiver Dance, but honestly, none of their move pulls work well with that. The Trash Cloak gets access to Iron Head, the Sandy Cloak can use Earthquake, and the Plant Cloak can use Leaf Storm. Congratulations guys, you're so powerful. I guess this whole list is fraudulent. How could I ever put such a strong impressive Pokemon all the way in the top 5 worst of their typing? Oh wait wait wait, I see now. I can do so because they have no speed, and even with their defenses, they can still be absolutely hammered by a fire type move hurt by Stealth Rocks, and they're all easily outclassed by Motham. There, I said it. At the very least, there's something to be said about the Trash Cloak's ability to take hits, and the Sandy Cloak as well, but that's it. These things suck big time. We kick off the top three now with one final Pokemon from Sinnoh, and it's gonna be the Cricket Pokemon, Cricketoon. I can hear its cry now, desperately begging not to be included on this list. Well, sorry Cricketune, but I can't hold back the fact that you're pretty bad. It's got 85 attack, and that's it. That's really the only good stat. 
However, complementing that stat is the ability Technician, which is a good one as we all know. Its speed is a poor 65, and it doesn't have the defenses necessary to take hits. Its access to moves like Fell Stinger, Knock Off, and Power Up Punch proved to work very well with Technician, giving Krikatoon some merit, but that's it. It's really got nothing else it's capable of doing outside of this one little thing that could potentially work out well, but probably not. I have some respect for Krikatoon though, which is why I'm keeping this one brief and just saying that it is upfront in how bad it is but also has enough of a redeeming quality to it so that it isn't in the top two. The next two Pokemon are where they are because one can't be redeemed at all and one is so insultingly bad despite its potential that it needs to be done there. You can live to cry another day, Krikatoon. Man, remember the thumbnail for the ice type video? That was great. And I'm bringing it up so I can show it again as Frostmoth kicks in as the second worst bug type today. I know immediately there's some of you very much up in arms just like before. Major fans of your precious little snob. And you're upset I'm not respecting Frostmoth more. Well, if Frostmoth worked a little bit harder, maybe I would show it some more respect. Its special attack is great, one of the highest for a bug at base 125. It has decent special defense too at base 90. And I should point out that its hidden ability is Ice Scales. This ability will lower the damage done by special attacking moves. And that plays well with this special defense stat. So with those good stats and a nice complimenting ability, how in Arceus' name is it possible that it comes in at number two today? Well, the easy answer is its speed and typing. Rock types and fire types will have a field day against Frostmoth and it can do so little to stop them. You can throw on heavy duty boots to avoid any damage from stealth rocks, but there will be no item that stops a flare blitz from Darmanitan from causing destruction, or any Pokemon using Rock Slide or Stone Edge. Its access to Quiver Dance is great, as is having Hurricane and Dazzling Gleam, but we can't avoid the fact that its speed is a problem at base 65, and thus its weakness to mostly any physical attacking move has a chance of taking it out in one shot constantly. There are few Pokemon who actually flat out waste their potential the way Frostmoth does, but the fact is that it can't function without heavy duty boots, and without being lucky enough to set up and survive. There might have been significantly weaker Pokemon that came before it on this list, but I put Frostmoth here due to just how much potential it really wastes. The only Pokemon worse than it is coming up next, but man, they may as well be two peas in a pod. Well, here we are, at the end of this list. This is interesting, as once again, we have a Pokemon from a previous list, and it wasn't number one then. Just like Frostmoth, it was only number three on the worst grass types list, and it's Parasect. I was shocked it was only three on that list, but it's most certainly no shock that it checks in here at number one. Just look at how bad these stats are. It's slow as dirt with base 30 speed, lackluster defenses at base 80, and even worse, base 60 HP. The only thing good here, clearly, is its base 95 attack, but it will have zero opportunity to attack anyone. Its abilities are a little bit interesting, I'll give it that, as Dry Skin means it can switch in on a water type move to heal, and Effect Spore is a bit of controlled chaos that can somehow pay off if you're lucky. That is just me trying to be a little bit positive though, as there isn't anything else worth caring about. Parasect is one of the very few Pokemon that has access to Spore, which actually causes me to cringe. Yeah, I get that it's a mushroom, that it's the innovator of Spore, but I still don't like or accept it. It'll never be able to outspeed anything unless Trick Room is up. And I'm tired of that circumstance being an excuse to justify bad Pokemon that are also slow. It can't take hits from fire or flying types, it can't hit anything back for any sort of real damage, and the little bit of utility it has gets canceled out by its poor speed. I'd say Parasect maybe could have ended up at number two, but unfortunately for it, Frostmoth's access to heavy duty boots helped it out big time. So this time around, Parasect gets its time in the sun as the worst Pokemon of a type. And I hope its dry skin activates so it'll faint sooner rather than later while it's out here. All right, that is going to do it for another top 10 worst video. 
This one was a bit rough to write in research, as the worst bug type Pokemon easily share a lot of reasons as to why they're so bad. The vast majority of these Pokemon are in Sword and Shield, so they are at a disadvantage of Stealth Rocks that others can now avoid using the Heavy Duty Boots. So many of them are defensively bad due to their typings, or have garbage move pulls that make it difficult to attack anything. It might have been a little repetitive, perhaps even a touch on the boring side at times. But that just lines up perfectly with this well-known fact. The bug type is the worst type of all time in Pokemon. And I'm not sure that'll ever change. Let me know what you guys think though about this list, and share with me the next typing you want to see covered. I'll be looking out for your answers. So with that said, thank you to everyone for watching the video. Huge thanks to my phenomenal team and the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all this without them. If you all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, as it really helps us out. I also do other content on my Twitch, where I stream Genshin Impact, Mystic Zora, where I do Pokemon Let's Plays and other gaming content, and of course Mystic Sage, where I do all anime content. Right now, I'm focusing on Inuyasha and Yashihime, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. If you'd like to support me even further than that, check out my Patreon. Whether it's a dollar tip to get early thumbnail access, or the $10 tier to get cool perler bead charms and a shout out. There's tons of reasons to join today. These lovely people did, and I thank them all so much for their support. It really means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrion, and I will see you all next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.